Good evening and hi again from Property Repair. In this video I'm going to show you how to modify mirrors on this BMW so that they fold and unfold upon locking and unlocking the car. For this job you need one 12 volt optocopton module, wires, basic tools, diodes, hitch rings, T-junction connectors and a soldering iron. From the car you need to remove the driver's door module. Keep in mind that with this module removed you need to manually lock and unlock the driver's door. Now you will need to have folding mirrors in the first place, as this was an option back then. If you don't, there are some tutorials online on how to retrofit them, but that's not what this video is about. So let's check how mirrors are operated. When we press the button on the switch, the signal goes directly to the driver's door mirror and then over people's data network to the passenger's door module which operates that mirror. We also get a signal when we lock and unlock the car and we're going to use that to our advantage. What I'm going to do is check for signal on those two wires and then trick the module to detect like the switch has been pressed. This will be done by the module which will close the connection upon receiving the signal. Now since we have two input signals, I'm going to have to put diodes in between so that the module doesn't get confused and possibly lock the car right after we just unlocked it. The module is also going to provide us with the ground. Now let's see that in practice. I have power and ground connected to this side and I'm measuring resistance on this side. When I raise the voltage, we see that the resistance will drop. It doesn't drop to zero, but it's good enough for our application. Here's the driver's side door module. I'm just going to use a prime tool to get it out. Okay, it has three connectors. Pop those out. Mm -hmm. This one goes like this. And now it comes. There we go. So we need to open up the module. It has three Phillips screws here, here, and one here. On the top part we have three more Phillips screws. Now this is the most difficult part. We need to solder two wires here and here. To place the cables outside the module I'm going to use one hole of the screw. There are still two more screws and one clip right here so it should hold in place. Now on the other part I had to cut off a bit of thread for the screw right here to make more space for the cables. Now let's put this all back together. When you do it, uh, put the mirror switch to the left position so that it won't interfere with this little pin right here. Now let's test it. We shouldn't have any resistance. That's good. So we didn't short the pins together. And when you press the switch, yeah, we got some resistance, but I think it's gonna work. To connect to ground and signal wires, 
I'm going to use these T-junction connectors. They're designed to pierce the cable and then another connector slides over them. On the signal wires, I'm also going to have to solder some diodes. Ok, now we just need to put it all together. The signal wires will be used as power, they go on this side, and ground goes here. On this side, we put those wires onto out and ground, it doesn't matter which goes which. Ok, and we're all done, I'm pretty excited to see how it works. Ok, everything is connected, those are the thin junctions, I've pierced all the cables. Now let's see first if the button still works. That it does. Great. And now have, we have to put it all back inside. For this module, there's a space right down there. So, when I lock the car, the mirrors fold. And they unfold. Perfect. I also tried using a standard and a high-low relay. It worked, but there is some voltage being applied at those signal wires all the time when the key is in the ignition. This didn't cause the mirrors to operate, but the relay was clicking all the time, which quickly became quite annoying. Therefore, using an optocoupler is a more user-friendly solution.